Alrighty, I got kind of a long one for you guys, so get comfortable, because we have a whole lot to go over in this video. Now, first things first, I want to cut this thing open and have a real good look at this body. As I've only ever just kid bashed it for the chassis, I've never used a body before. And it should be evident by the thumbnail, but we're doing things a little out of order here. I'm going to be starting with the chassis. That is going to be because we are going to do a whole lot of test fitting. We're going to be doing modifications to both the body and the chassis to make it all work. So it only makes sense to not have the body finished while I work on the chassis. Alright, so with that out of the way, this body, well, it's about exactly what I was expecting. Now, from my understanding, this truck is the short bed version of the Fall Guy TV show. So it had these hidden compartments in the bed where he just stored bad guys and saved them for later, I guess. Not really sure as I've never actually seen the show. Other than that, just flash, mold lines, the usual stuff. And clearly, this bed is just not going to slip over that chassis. The front is a little narrow on the fender wells, but that's alright, I got a solution for that later. The wheelbase is about the same. Interesting. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going back and forth, mocking up different pieces, and just kind of try to visualize it and come up with an attack plan. I've used this chassis numerous times and it just dawned on me that anything with an interior tub has trouble fitting. And that is because the Chevelle chassis is the interior tub for that car. And just as I had suspected, it's not going to fit on this one either. There is an easy fix though. The Chevelle chassis, it is really thick, so all we do is just shave down the sides of the trans tunnel there. So using the grids on my cutting mat, I'm going to get a rough idea just how much I need to shorten or lengthen this thing. And, uh, they're, they're looking pretty close. Looking at this raised section there, that is about even with that cross member. So ideally, I should be able just to slice it there and mate them together. So now, for the fun part, I'm going to take a whole bunch of measurements. So from what I remember, the Chevelle chassis, it is a millimeter shorter than a truck chassis, and about 8 millimeters narrower. And the wheelbase, if I remember right, was 2 millimeters shorter, so it's not that much smaller than a truck chassis. Which is why I've came to the conclusion that I'm just going to use a Chevelle chassis. That's going to do two things. One, it's going to save us a whole bunch of time. It's also going to let us use the independent front suspension instead of trying to mangle that front axle together. So to make sure we can get away with that, I'm going to mock up the cab with the firewall and the core support. Now being that the idea I have for this truck in my mind is that it is just a drag strip, nothing else truck, so we're going to shave this firewall. I started by backfilling those with super glue, then on this one I didn't want to waste that much glue so I just made a panel over the back of it, then we'll cut that off and backfill it later. And it would appear as though the glue that's down inside of there didn't actually dry. Lovely. So 
And clearly, my nippers aren't going to do a whole lot on the heater core housing over here. This should work. And with that guy cut off, you could see how much I would have had to fill if I'd done all that with super glue. Now I was left with kind of a gnarly cut there, so I'm going to go sand as much of that smooth as possible. And with that sanded down mostly flush, I'm just going to fill in that gap with some super glue. What I'm going to do here though is I'm just going to let it level itself out and then just dry all on its own. I'm not going to use any kicker here. That is a huge pool of super glue. That would get so hot it probably burnt through the plastic. Now once it's had plenty of time to dry, I'm just going to go back to that sandpaper and smooth it all out. So we should be left with something that looks just like this. Now I know somebody's going to ask, but the master cylinder here, we converted that to a frame mounted unit. And the steering column, that's uh, well it uses Wi-Fi steering. And while I was there, I also smoothed out the core support as well. Alright, so I got those guys glued in and I done the test fitting on the chassis. Everything clears, it is just way too narrow. So what I did off camera is I just took a little strip of for sale sign and kind of lined that wheel well there with it. Now this is going to be like a bridge of sorts. I, I don't know what else to call it. So what I'm going to do now is use a little cutoff from a rattle can lid and then just run it around there. It is the exact same thickness as the fender so everything should come out even. And of course that didn't work because glue won't stick to that lid for whatever reason. So I just laminated two sections of for sale sign together and used it instead. I also filled in the gap there with a whole lot of super glue. We're going to sand it back and it should look something like this. Now this side is just rough cut. It still needs to be sanded to fit. But you guys get the idea of what we're doing here. As I mentioned earlier, I got some sanding and fitting and contouring to do, but it's always a work in progress. Hopefully it'll all turn out in the end. Alright, in the meantime though, I'm going to get the sanding all that super glue down. And thanks to YouTube Voodoo, well, I'm already done. So I got all my measurements done. I'm going to cut this down to just a rough width, just so it's easier to work with, and then snap apparently all that super glue and that laminated for sale sign is too much for these heavy duty shears to handle so i just ran upstairs real quick and just buzzed it off with the bandsaw now there's just a little bit of daylight showing on that driver's side fender we'll address that later but for right now and more importantly these two tabs on the core support they center perfectly on the chassis. Yeah, nice. I know. Alright, so what we got to do now is mock up the bed and get the chassis set and level inside the body. The next order of business is marking out exactly where and how much of the floor of the bed I need to cut out to make the tubs on that chassis fit. I don't know if it's just dumb sheer luck or whatever the case may be, but I needed to cut back to the openings on the wheel wells on the bed. 
So I've already got my tape lined out. That's going to be my guide when I scribe all of this out. But first, I want to reinforce this bed a little bit. And what I did here is I just laminated two pieces of for sale sign together. I cut it out to match that opening. And hey guys, it's that easy. We got a roll pan. And once I'm actually happy with the fitment of that thing, I'm just going to make it permanent with some super glue. I'm just going to use some more super glue to fill in all the gaps on the edges. Just going to let that soak down into there. And once it's dry, I'll come back and sand it all flush. And off camera, I also cut off the excess there. So now this is nice and even with the body. That glue's had some time to dry, so I'm just going to smooth it all out now and clean it up. So do you guys remember earlier when I said that this video was going to be about the chassis? Yeah, uh, for some reason I was in the mood to fill up some gaps, so I went ahead and took care of the hidden compartments on the bed. And I am again just using some super glue for that. So just like last time, we get all that filled in, sanded flush, and it should look like this side afterwards. I know there's some ghosting, but if it doesn't catch your fingernail, then paint will hide it all. So I just gave it a quick sanding. I'm going to do the fingernail test here just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Then off camera, I hit it with a few coats of primer just to make sure. And that is looking pretty good to me. Well, that is except for the area back here where it's got a hair in it, but we'll sand that out later. Alrighty, so with what just turned out to be a simple project to strengthen the bed it ended up being a whole night. But we are finally ready to go back to start scribing all of our lines. I'm going to speed up this section here because, well, this is just scribing. We've all seen us do this before. This is why I strengthened the rear section of that bed, because I knew I was going to be cutting this area out. I had thought that if I used a razor saw to cut out the fender wells, it would go a bit quicker, but it's about the same speed as just scribing out the other side. Alrighty, you guys ready for this? Bam, that is that whole bed hacked up and ruined. So a quick glance. Yeah, looks like this is going to work. This chassis, if it's even got that step in the rear, that is going to work out perfect for the way this bed is set up. 
Only thing I need to do is cut off that kind of rounded off bit and make it nice and flat. That piece flew straight off directly into my drink. It's a good thing it's almost empty. Yeah, that's money. I don't want to jinx it, but this thing is going together extremely well, considering, well, it was never designed to fit. We're almost at the home stretch here, of this part at least. All we got to do now is just round off those inner fenders so they match the contour of the wheel tubs. To do that, I just found something that's roughly the same shape and diameter of the tubs, and then I taped some sandpaper to it and just got to work. Now I should have used one of my rotary tools to speed this up, but uh, what is it they say about hindsight? With those sanded out and the frame sitting flush to the bed, we can move on to my biggest gripe with using this chassis. The narrowed rear end, well, it's too narrow. I never really liked how far the wheel tucks up into the wheel well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this narrowed rear end here. And I cut off one of the axle tubes. I used a piece of styrene, put a little notch into it so it saddles that shock mount. And, well, bam, extended axle. So the idea is I'm just going to extend that tube however far I need it to, then use the existing hub, glue it in place, and, well, that's our longer axle. It seems easy enough, I know, but it involves math. And as you guys know, I'm not good at math. First thing we need to do is figure out just how much wider we need to make this axle. From inner fender well to inner fender well, it is 77 millimeters. And I want this thing to tuck up in there and just fill out that wheel well. I want it to be just almost touching the inner fender. Again, using the grids on my cutting mat and some toothpicks as some makeshift shims, I'm going to glue in these axle tubes as close to level as my eyeball could get them. I'm going to pretend to be a machinist and spin this around to show you that there is no detectable runout. I'd say those things are pretty straight. But to figure out how wide we need to cut these, I made myself a little template here. The outermost line is going to be where I want the tire to line up with. That second line is actually going to be the hub of the wheel. That is where the end cap, the axle, is going to mount. So once I got the overall width determined, I just marked a center line dead center and then measured out the width of these mounting tabs. So with the template laid out and all of our markings done, we could finally measure just how long we actually need to cut these axle tubes. And it looks like they are right at 17 millimeters. To cut these as straight as possible, I'm going to line this up against the straight edge of my Tamiya Extra Thin and just use that as a guide and just run the blade across ever so slightly. And once we get that cut deep enough, we could use the tube itself as a guide to cut it the rest of the way. So I'm going to clean up that fuzzy edge from the saw, then I'm going to do a little sanity check. What I say earlier, 17 millimeters? I think that's right. I hope that's right, because that's what these turned out to be. Alright, let's give it a test fit. 
Oh, and those little mounting tabs right there, they're kind of gnarly looking because I shaved them down a little bit to help lower the rear end. And we are as low as we can go on this thing too, by the way. The top of that tire is just barely skimming the top of that tub. That is perfect, guys. That is exactly where I was wanting that to sit. It fills that wheel well all the way up, and it, oh wait, what's going on? Oh, the chassis slid over. Now, as I was saying, that fills up that fender well perfectly. That is a nice, fat chunk of meaty tire. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I just can't stop looking at it. I'm going to put the rear axle together and off camera I added some more tubing just to beef it up and make it look better. Then I painted it black to kind of hide this monstrosity I created here. Alright, so we're going to put the rear end on hold for just a second and move towards the front of the vehicle. No particular reason, I just got these out of sequence when I edit it and I'm not going to go back and fix it. So I'm going to mock this up with a little bit of tape real quick just so that I could get some more measurements. At this scale, one millimeter is approximately one scale inch. So looking at this, we have theoretically an eight inch gap between the top of the tire and the fender wheel. Here is an old school trick to instantly lower just about any model kit. You're watching, it's going to go fast because it's real easy. Boom, all I did was flip the spindle over. And once I get this wheel straight, we could take another measurement. So it's looking like we are now at 5 millimeters. So in essence, we just lowered this thing by 3 inches. But we can go lower. And you guys have all seen me do this a few times now. All I do is I just cut off that mounting tab and raise it so it's essentially mounting the wheel and tire up higher into the wheel well. Alrighty, let's see where we're at now. Looks like we are right at 3 millimeters. That is a total of 5 inches that we lowered the front of this thing. So that original cut there, I had used my sprue cutters and it came out kind of gnarly. So this time around, I am going to just saw it off. Now every one of these that I have done, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's a casting flaw, but the centers of them tend to be hollow. And that always works in our favor because hey, now we have a center point to start drilling from. So I'm going to drill through this thing as deep as I can, then I'm going to jump over to the spindle and I'm going to drill a corresponding hole so the tab is just flush with the very bottom of the spindle. And now we're going to pin all this in place for strength and alignment. Now in the past, I have always used staples for this, but I can't find any. So I'm going to use some 23 gauge pins for my brad nailer. These things are 
about three dollars for a pack of 500 so i don't really feel that bad about wasting it now the only problem i've ran into using these so far is that gold on them that's actually a wax coating to help it ease into the wood a little bit better so all i have to do is sand that off because super glue would not stick to it So now we got it all put back together, we just cut off the excess on the back, and we have our very own custom drop spindles. And back to the rear of the car. Back here, I just got to cut off a tiny tad bit of the rear shock since we did lower the rear diff a little bit. That's easy. I'm going to skip right past this because, well, anybody could take a pair of nippers and cut them to length. Now, a problem that I ran into that I was not thinking ahead about, since I had beefed up the rear axle, these control arms do not fit anymore. The solution that I came up with was to use a round needle file and to kind of round off the inside of that mounting boss. Once I got that somewhat round so it'll fit around the axle tube, I'm just going to cut off that front tab. It's basically the same thing, just instead of like straddling the axle, it's just going to hook around the back of it. I'm trying to show you guys how all this is going to look, but without that rear axle glued in, it's, it's not really going that well. Yeah, I give up. You'll see it all later. And I have never been a fan of wheelie bars for a street-driven vehicle, so I'm just going to cut these right off and forget they were ever there. So I stripped all the chrome off and I am going to paint all of these components red. I am a product of the late 90s, early 2000s when every aftermarket suspension component was red. Uh, who was it? It was a uh, Eibach, BMR, Sphone, Hotchkiss. They were all red. So I'm going to carry on that tradition of my childhood and paint almost all the suspension components red. Because at the time, that was the staple of aftermarket performance. So with those drying, I'm going to glue in the upper A-arms and I'm going to paint the entire chassis flat black. And then I'm going to do a whole lot of masking. All the tub chassis I've ever seen in my life, all the panels, they're aluminium. So I masked off the chassis and I'm just going to paint everything that looks like it's bead rolled to be aluminium. And while I had the paint in the airbrush, I went ahead and painted our drop spindles that same aluminium color. Alright, now for the fun part. I could peel off all that masking tape that I'd spent probably an hour laying out. Easy come, easy go. Wait, does that reference work here? I don't know. I'm tired.
So yeah, that's how this is going to look. At least from the bottom. The top of it here, I didn't even touch because none of this is going to be seen. Alright, by this time the paint's dry, so let's start putting this thing together. And guys, do take note that even though the spindles do swivel, the car doesn't actually have posable steering. The tie rods and the drag link here, these actually mount to the control arm. A close attention here. Uh, do you guys see it? Yeah, I made a mistake. For those of you that missed it, I had mounted this spindle upside down. Now, I don't want it sitting all lopsided. So we got to fix this. Luckily, I had used some Tamiya Extra Thin, so this glue is still not dry yet. There we go. It's like it never even happened. From there, I'm just going to add just the tiniest drop of gold paint to all the fittings just to make it look like the zinc coated Zerk fittings. And I couldn't leave well enough alone. Those rubber bushings between the drag link and the tie rod, I just put a little bit of black paint on them. And for absolutely no reason, I decided that I'm going to paint up the rear axle in a gloss black instead of a flat. Now, speaking of black, I'm just going to go over the rear coilovers with a bit of Tamiya panel line accent just to get down in the fittings to separate the springs from the actual shocks. Now, since we did cut these shorter, we lost one of the mounting pegs, so uh, they slide into place, but they got to be aligned, and it's... Uh, it's kind of a process, but once you get it, it's there. The transmission cross member here, it is a piece to this puzzle, but it gets installed later after the engine and transmission. This is usually where I wrap this up though, but I cannot help myself. I gotta mock this thing up to see how it looks. Now we will notice that the wheel tubs, they are not centered in the actual wheel wells of the truck. I have a fix for that, which we will see a few videos from now. Now this is supposed to be slammed, but due to the height of the rear tires, there will be just a little bit of a break. And I don't know why I'm showing you guys that with my hand. Let me just set this on this table and show you. So that is the right height though, guys. And I gotta tell you, it is exactly what I had in mind when I set out to put this thing together.
And just one last thing to do to wrap up the suspension part of this build. Since the front spindles do kind of swivel back and forth, like no way to align them, I am just going to center them up as much as I can by eye and glue them in place. Eh, that looks pretty centered. Alright guys, I do admit that was a rather long video. I haven't done a long video like this in quite a while. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something, or at the very least was entertained. Stay tuned because we got more of this build coming. Have a good night.